Hello, this is Mel McGinnis with the Sophie Scholl Society. You may have been hearing a term that's been recently footed by certain segments of the church here in America. It's called Christian nationalism. When I heard that term, I was very skeptical of it. And sure enough, David Clawson, director of Christian Ethics and Biblical Worldview, says, at best, the project is a solution in search of a problem. At worst, it's an attempt to drive conservative Christians out of the public square. What is this movement that's been afloat? It's basically left-leaning churches that have joined together to attack those who are for the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence being understood and applied with regard to its uh, original intent and amendments. When you look at what's going on in the political circles today, you will see that if you disagree with somebody, you're called a racist. If you have a position that's opposite to theirs, you're called a bigot. Terms are being used in ways to try to shut down debate and debate stoppers like racist, bigot, homophobe, Islamophobe are very common amongst those on the left in order to silence those who have another point of view. And here we see Christian nationalism being used in the same way to silence those who want to make a statement in the public square with respect to standing up for free market principles standing out against reparations, uh, free college tuition, forgiveness of student loans. I wouldn't be surprised if you'll see those on the left saying these are the policies of Christian nationalists. When you hear this term, it's being used in a way that would associate those with the white supremacy movement. So I want to make you aware that this term Christian nationalism is being used in a way that will try to make you be silent and resist speaking up for what's right versus what is wrong. I hope that in the midst of this discussion, those who are promoting this term will actually define it. Define it for us, what you mean by Christian nationalism. Right now, it's an undefined term, but it's trying to be used effectively in ways that will promote an agenda that stray away from our Constitution and the essence of the Declaration of Independence. We'll talk more about this later, but you'll notice that those who are promoting this are from denominations that are leftist, in theology, and when you're leftist in theology, you're going to have that leftist point of view in your politics. You'll see names like Tony Campolo be in on this movement. So again, we'll look later at this movement and what it's trying to do in regards to keeping people silent about what is true, about what is right, about what is principled. Finally, I just want to mention our Sophie Show Society is meeting the third Wednesday of every month. In fact, in August, we meet on the third or the third Wednesday, which is August 21st, 11 a.m. at the Cayentone Congregational Church. We're covering the book, The Church in Babylon, written by Lee Strobel. This book goes into how the church is in a post-Christian, post-modern society, that we are not to evacuate the public square, but to be engaged. And we'll be picking up on the third chapter this month, and before that time on August 21st occurs, I may just go over briefly the chapters that have been covered here. So I wanted to let you know about that, and if you're in the area, come and join us for the Sophie Scholl Society, August 
21st, 11 a.m., Cayentone Congregational Church. Bye for now.